This is the view across the hills from the campsite where I'm staying. In fact, we're surrounded by a kind of ring of mountains, really. And over there is the mountain of particular interest to me. See that little bit of light colored cliff sticking up there? That's called Las Peñas Blancas. That's the white cliffs. And it's one of the highest peaks in this area. And tomorrow I'm thinking of hiking up there. I'm gonna start really early in the morning and hike up there to the top. There's a little refuge on top that is an interesting place we could visit. There's also some mine workings and I don't know if these are Las Peñas Rojas. Uh, they might be. Anyway, that's the plan for tomorrow morning. I've already been to the supermarket and stocked up on some provisions. So we've got food and water to carry up there. And it's traditional, I believe, to leave some food and water in the refuge. You know, you take what you need, leave what you can. So I've bought some extra food to leave behind as well. So it's the following morning. The sun hasn't yet come over the mountains here. That's the tiny little tip of Las Peñas Blancas over there. A little bit of cloud cover today, which is good for me because hopefully that will just mitigate the sun's heat until later in the day. So from here, just beyond La Cuesta, which is a 330 meter peak over this pass here, but in the mountains between Madron and Cartagena, we can get a better view of Las Peñas Blancas. The point I'm going to be going to is right on top of that lump at the far left hand side. You've got a lo lovely sheer white cliff and then there's a lump. I'm going to that highest point there which is 632 meters I believe. And these cliffs dominate the landscape all around. So as far as you can get nearly to Cartagena over there and you can still see these cliffs and again over in Mataron and Puerta de Mataron you can still see the cliffs looming above you. It's, uh, they dominate the skyline for quite a distance. So there we go. Anyway, that's what I'm going to be climbing. I'm climbing up the other side of it though. I'm not going to go up the cliff face. I'm not a mountaineer. Okay, so we're following a trail across the edge of, well, I think this is kind of metamorphic rock. There's the bedding plains. I think this is schist of some sort. Well, it could be shale. Quite a steep track. And we've got to go up there. So, feral bit of upper, uphill slog before we get to where we're going. So, I will be out of breath. Now, the trail is marked by little yellow and white markers every now and again. But you have to look out for them. They're not always obvious. Anyway, oh, camera off for a bit while I just slog up this hill. So yeah, there we go. That's one of the trail markers. Oh. So, hazards today, because people always worry when I do a video like this that I might be taking some unreasonable risk, but I've done the worrying in advance, so you don't have to. <sighs> I'll get my breath back and we'll talk about potential hazards today. Okay, risks today. Obviously, trips and slips and falls. There are open mine shafts and caves and things to fall into up here. Big boulders sticking up in the middle of the path. So it's very important that I look where my next few steps are gonna be. So, trips, slips and falls. Snakes. Spain is home to quite a few species of snake of which a few, I think a couple, are 
quite dangerously venomous. So again, looking where my next few steps are, not putting my hand into any holes or crevices, just having my wits about me will help there. As far as I understand it, the venomous snakes that are, they have here in Spain are not aggressive, and so I just need to avoid them. They won't come after me, they'll probably actually go away from me. So, just need to avoid stepping on them and getting bitten. Other risks, sunstroke, or dehydration, or sunburn. Well, I have the very best sunblock on. The very best sunblock that money can buy. And I'm carrying as much water as I can, which is about five and a half litres, which is way more than I expect to uh, actually use today. But there's a reason why I'm carrying extra water, which we'll find out about when we get up to the top. Other risks, personal security. I suppose it's conceivable I could be robbed or mugged up here. I think it's probably less likely than getting mugged or robbed in a dark alley in town because who's gonna trek all the way up here just to mug little old me? So I think that, that risk is reasonably small. And, well, landslides and cliff falls could be a thing. Those rocks are not gonna stay up there forever. And these boulders and loose scree are here because they were once rocks up there. So, ears pinned back for falling rocks. But that's just a risk that, in a way, I have to accept that, you know, that's a bad thing that could happen. It's pretty unlikely. Now, if I should injure myself, or find myself unable to descend later on, I've got a fully charged phone, I've got some lights, I've got emergency clothing. I have over-prepared for this journey, vastly over-prepared, especially because I'm hiking alone. So, if I need to, I can call for assistance. Ah, see, getting lost is another risk, I suppose. So I was just about to head off across here, but actually there's the trail marker. Trail continues up here. So you're getting lost, getting stuck up on the mountain, could be a problem. There is a mountain refuge up on the top of this hill. Well, it is, I think it is technically a mountain. Uh, so, we're going to have a look at that when we get up there. That's part of today's objective, is to visit the Refugio de Peñas Blancas. Right. Just upward across these rocks now. Now we should get a bit of a view from up here. Whew. Okay. Right, there we go. Not a bad view, but we're not at the top yet. So we've got uh, La Azoya, Isla Plana, and off in the distance, Puerto de Madron. Oh, it's nice up here. Lovely breeze. Right, I believe the trail goes this way now. Right, so we're nowhere near level with the surrounding peaks, which makes it obvious we're not near the top yet. So we are still on the trail. I think the peak we're going to is actually that one up there. So we'll just stop and admire some of the flora here. So we've got a dwarf fan palm here. That might be like a hundred years old, this plant. Look at all the little crowns it's got. And there's almost no rainfall up here. And so these things are surviving on dew that condenses as it blows up here off the sea. We've got thyme there, 
and rosemary. So all I've got to do is catch a rabbit and we can have a little stew. trail's not very easy to see in some places so it is just a case of figuring out what looks like the easiest way to walk because that is the actual trail so I'll stop in a minute and have a little drink I've got loads of water with me I have brought food as well I have enough supplies that if I got stuck up here overnight, I'd be okay. Probably even two nights. Not intending that will happen, obviously. So this plant here is a bath asparagus. Some species of ornithogalum in spring this stuff pops up with its flower heads and the locals come out and pick it and eat it like asparagus it has been cultivated in the uk under the name bath asparagus so you can see obviously this path is an artificial terrace here now this might not be constructed as a path because a lot of these hillsides have little terraces like this so that olive trees and things could be planted wherever they would find enough soil to grow. So yeah, you can see there might have been a little water course here. And see all these little walls up there. These are terraces. These would have been this would have been somebody's house. There'd have been a little hut down there, a little shack. There are carob trees. I think there might be an olive tree or two up there as well. And this would have been part of somebody's little, well, farmstead, I suppose. Kind of long since abandoned. Although somebody still owns the land. And it may well be that that somebody, even though they may not live here anymore, comes and picks the olives or carobs or whatever else is down here so some pine trees as well again might have been planted for firewood charcoal who knows now the path we're walking on now the soil has started to get a lot more red indicating the presence of iron which is one of the reasons these hills these mountains were interesting to people in days gone by we're going to see some abandoned mine works up here so they're actually named, they're called caves, but they're actually abandoned mines. And this area was mined for iron, silver and lead, I believe, but not gold. I don't think there's any gold in these hills. Look at that. That's a piece of pottery, I think. It's either a piece of pottery or it's a piece of stone that somebody's worked, maybe to sharpen a knife with or something. That was just down there on the trail. Now this place has been inhabited, well, pretty much forever, but the, the Romans were up here mining around 2,000 years ago. So that could be a piece of Roman artifact there and yeah you can see there's a piece of iron ore right there there's quite a few little specks and pieces of iron ore
And in some places you can find, where we're going to look at the mine workings, you can see that they just tossed the iron ore down the hill because at that point they were mining for silver and the iron, the iron ore was kind of just mine tailings. Oh boy, right, well we're going up there. We're still quite a long way from our objective, but we've come quite a long way too. Well, this looks like it might be a good place to stop and have a little break. Get my breath back, have a drink, a little nibble of a snack, and then press on. So I can see caves, I can see a cave over there. I can see mine tailings over there and down there. On a clear day, I think we'd better see all the way to Cartagena from up here. Maybe we will from the top. We've lost sight of Puerto de Madron behind this hill now, but we'll get another better view from way up the top. But you can see relative to that peak that we looked at earlier, we're making progress. Right, suitably refreshed and revitalized with a little snack and a drink, we're off again. So the peak we're climbing today, it's not mountaineering, this is hiking, but it is technically a mountain. 631 meters above sea level, and that is the surrounding locale. So 631 meters does make it technically a mountain. Technically correct is the best kind of correct. Not a mountain by Everest standards, of course. I think it only comes to about 71 or 72 milli Everests but still a mountain and that's what counts just looking at that rock there is that a bit of oh I thought that might have been a bit of agate but it's not just a bit of iron ore anyway now you do see a lot of this stuff around it looks like concrete because it's got a kind of substrate and then these aggregate rocks in it but this is completely natural and there's a ton of it about the whole mountains made of it in fact yeah so it's like uh, well some of it's like a, a brassiated rock where it's shattered apart and then something else has flowed into the shattered remains and some of it's like a conglomerate where something like a riverbed or a scree field has been covered with sediment or lava and that's cemented everything together. So we find examples of both of those things on these hills, both con conglomerates and Brescia. This bit of the trail is not so easy actually, it's quite sandy and loose. I'm glad of the stick. figure out where the trail goes from here. Uh, it looks like it might be along there actually. No, it's up here. You know, the trail's not tremendously clear. Not in all places anyway. But you know, as long as we're going uphill, in theory we get to the top. Although in practice, we could get to the top of the wrong hill. However, this and that is a good indicator that the trail is here. Someone's put rocks here. These didn't end up here on their own. Someone's put rocks here to indicate that is the correct trail. Very helpful, thank you whoever that was. We're coming to the crest of a hill but that's the hill we want to be on and there's a bit of a valley here I have a feeling there's a ridge connecting them I can also see a ruin up there and the remains of some terraces up there so that'll be worth a look in addition to looking at how far we still got to go let's reflect on how far we've come uh, somewhere down there is where I started 
making good progress and I'm glad that the cloud has a bit of cloud cover although that might spoil the view a little bit at the top but it is protecting me from the worst of the sun's heat it won't necessarily protect me from ultraviolet but I've got sunblock for that Right, we're definitely on the trail again now. Okay, how about that for a view? Right, I can now see the starting point. It was down on that road somewhere. In fact, those are the mine tailings I pointed out earlier, I think. There's the ruin and the terraces. That's where we're heading. And so I need to get across this little ridge here and up that hillside. So if you, in case you're wondering what those are down there, those are farms, those are greenhouses, although they're more like uh, netting and they grow tomatoes Sometimes grapevines, but often tomatoes, cucumbers, those sorts of things, underneath that netting, which the netting provides a little bit of uh, shelter from just evaporation of water. And of course there's a, a water cistern that will be filled, well potentially from a spring that might come out of these hills, but most likely it's filled from water from a municipal supply there's a desalination plant just behind that hill there right the trail here is very unclear but i still can see here and there signs that we're on the right path well partly because i'm heading the right direction as i say i've got across this ridge and then up there Oh look, there's one for Chris Packham. That's fox poo. The local foxes will be eating, in addition to things like mice and birds and so on, they'll be eating berries. And so the fox poo, when you see it, is full of tiny seeds. Ah, right. So I might have wandered off the trail a little bit. There's the official trail because there is a very faded yellow and white painted marker. There's a slightly better one. So anyway, we're not lost yet. Now does the trail go down there? Well, there's a terrace there. Well, I'm loath to go downhill too far. Yeah, it might go along this terrace. Yeah, it does look like it goes along this terrace and up there. It might be, a, I'm just gonna have a look up here because if we can get up this ridge, it's a quicker route to the top, but also probably a little bit more perilous. No, well, maybe. There is a trail through here. No, I don't fancy scrambling over those rocks. I'm gonna follow the trail along that terrace and see where that takes me. This does look like it's the right way because piles of rocks, piles of rocks, oh yeah, trail marker, point, okay, this is the way. Now I could just use, use my footpath app for this, could just get the app out, use the GPS, use the footpath map to find the official trail because I think it is marked on the map. But I quite enjoy trying to find the old style markers, you know, doing it the old, old way. Trying to find the markers. Another 
piece of iron ore there. It's got bright red and black bands in it. I don't know if that would tumble at all. I don't know if it's that kind of a rock. It sounds quite hard. Quite a ravine here, look at that. I think the Spanish word for this is an arroyo, like a dry river. But it might not be, this might be a ravine. Answers in the comments, please. So yeah, see this rock here is more of a brescia than a conglomerate. And this is, again, as I say, probably metamorphic. Probably once was sedimentary. You can still see remains of bedding planes there. But at some point there's been a volcanic event. And volcanic event is probably also indicated by these bubbles. And the volcanic event heats the sedimentary rocks and transforms them into metamorphic rocks. So things like limestone become things like marble. Yeah, look at that hole there. These are from gas bubbles. Yeah, I could just put that stick in there like that, clamp my camera to it, and perfect tripod. Wow, look at the view. Now I noticed a, a tiny cave right there. And you, see, you get a lot of these in the hills up here. And often they're little shepherd's caves. So the shepherds with their goats and sheep will be up here in the hills, just basically tending their flock. Goats and sheep can eat, well, goats especially can eat just about any of these plants around here. But the shepherd needs somewhere to shelter at night. And so a little hole like that in the side of the rock might well have been the place. Um, I don't think the trail goes over there, so I think the trail carries on up the hill, so I'm not going over to see that. So now we've got to clamber up this. The trail is in the middle of this ravine for the moment. So this would not be a place. This would not be a place to climb when there's heavy rain because this could just suddenly turn into a torrent. Anyway, looks like it goes this way and back out of the... and up there, so... Yeah, so trail marker very helpfully says we turn right here. I am qu quite pleased that we managed to not lose the trail markers because not altogether obvious in every place. So... We're still on the trail, it goes that way now. And then it takes a right turn. So that's where we just walked, along that terrace, around this corner, along there, and then back up here. Oh. So it's 632 meters high, but we're probably going to be walking two or three kilometers to get there because of the winding nature of the trail. And of course, because it's not a sheer vertical climb. on the trail. Good to know. Take a drink every time he says still on the trail. So what I took to be terraces here is actually mine tailings. These piles of rock here are excavated from some mine, drift mines up there somewhere. We'll hopefully get a chance to look inside of one of those in a minute. I'm not going to go deep inside the mines because 
they're derelict and probably not all that safe. But we can poke our nose in and have a little look. Oh, look, here is evidence of one of the minerals they might have been mining. So this is a piece of iron ore, and that's probably hematite on it there. Sparkly form of, sparkly sort of gray form of hematite, maybe magnetite. But that's a piece of iron ore there. So that might have been one of the things they're mining here. Or well, that might have been the, the waste when they were mining silver. Right, well there's, oh you can see a lot more iron in this tailings heap here. And there is a official trail marker right here. So let's have a look at this. This is a much more modern trail marker. Let's see what we got. Oh, ah, and this is the mouth of one of the mines. I think this might be La Cueva de las Moscas. No? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I'm going to have a look on the GPS and see what this cave is called. They call them caves, they are mines. The language doesn't make a lot of difference, a differentiation between the words for cavern and cave and a hole in the ground that's used to be a mine. Anyway, right, so yeah, this bit is great danger uh, approaching pits and mines. Uh, don't go inside the cavities, don't go inside the mine cavities, and don't leave the established trail. To the best of my ability, I've done some of those things. The, um, the thing about don't go inside the, the mine cavities, I don't think that's a law, that's just strongly worded advice. Um, so that the authorities have basically uh, executed their, their responsibilities in telling me that going in there is potentially a dumb idea. So this mine cave doesn't have a name, apparently. Up there, there's a cave that has a very peculiar name, and it's called Cueva del Vat, or V-A-T, uh, Cave of V-A-T. Now, V-A-T doesn't mean value-added tax in Spanish, that's IVA. So it's a bit of a mystery what that cave up there is actually named. I presume that's just somebody's initials, V-A-T. Perhaps the name of the miner who uh, originally dug it or owned it. Anyway, we will have a little look inside of here. There is a warning saying don't do that, but I'm a grown-up. I'm gonna take a calculated risk here. So, I've got quite a nice bright light. We will just have a little look in here, because it's actually pretty sound. There are obviously some rocks on the ground that have fallen down, so there's a seam of minerals of some sort, look, where they've done something. There are no dangerous mountain lions or other wild animals here to eat me. I think it does go quite a long way in, and I'm not going to go any further than that. But, yeah, I haven't got a hard hat or anything like that. So I think we'll just head back out. But anyway, that's the cave without a name. A butterfly there, and I did hear some flies buzzing around. Because, here's an interesting thing. So, anyway, that cave doesn't have a name. The cave, a little bit further up there, is called the cave of VAT, or cave of VAT, or whatever, it did occur to me to wonder whether VAT might be a kind of weird transliteration of the English word BAT, because there's no distinction between V and B in Castilian Spanish. So if some English person said it's like a BAT cave, and some Spanish person transcribed that as a VAT cave, it seems a bit far-fetched, doesn't it? It's more likely, because it's capitalised on the name of the thing on the map, it's more likely that that is somebody's initials. Anyway, that's the cave with no name. Next, we are going to head up. So the sign says, the, uh, the I think the peak is up this way. Well, there's a trail that goes up there. That's the yellow and white trail. So that's where we're going. Quite a steep climb there, so probably camera off for that one. 
but there's the the main trail again and we must be getting close to the other cave or the other mine working now now one of the reasons they tell you not to stray off the trail is there are just great big holes in the ground there are a few places here where there's the top of an air shaft or a vertical mine shaft and there's nothing to stop you just wandering into it and in some cases i suppose those mine shafts might be obscured by growth of bushes around the perimeter and potentially might have loose material at the edges so like i say like i said earlier it's a case of not just watching my step but think about where my next few steps are anyway another big tailings pit another big tailings heap here so I oh and there's a track along here so I feel pretty certain there's going to be a, a cave or something in here anyway well, let's actually have a look off this edge here oh boy now it is often commented in my videos oh you sound out of breath Michael well I hope I've got a decent enough excuse for being out of breath today exercise will tend to do that anyway so yeah that I believe this is the Cueva del Vat or VAT VAT definitely not going in there even though I could I could scramble down this side here and there's something in there but you can see big blocks of stuff have fallen here so yeah maybe not and look at these vertical like pipes so these would have been bubbles or steam vents when this was all volcanic and you can see various ores iron ore other minerals would have been forced up there and I believe that's what they were mining for anyway so yes I've just checked on the map this is definitely Cueva del VAT del VAT Cueva del VAT whatever that means I'd love it if one of you watching this might be able to shed some light on that was there some important person with the initials VAT in Spain a few hundred years ago that owned this mine good grief it goes a long way down yeah you wouldn't want to be falling in that would you and off over that way there's Cueva de las Moscas cave of the flies I think we might give that one a miss so we're leaving behind the cave with the mysterious name just wanted to look at the, look at that mineralization over there on those rocks where the chunks of iron ore or iron clay have kind of accreted and gathered oh it's quite breezy up here as you can well imagine hold on to my hat okay so the trail goes around the end of this mysterious cave which from here doesn't look very much like very much does it I bet if I tried and walk across those bushes I'd fall down a very deep hole I think I can see over there the crest of the white cliffs but before we do that I'm just gonna have a quick look here because there was a mine there were some ruins just over this bit here So this bit here does appear to be maybe a collapsed mine yeah that could be a shaft that goes down a long old way just gonna make sure I tread on the rocks that could be a an old mine this bit here is where those ruins were but I'm not sure we're gonna be able to get to them but I imagine you know the mine workers probably had to live somewhere and I don't imagine they went all the way down the hill every night so they probably slept up here and they probably had some little huts or little shacks that they lived in 
and went to, you know, you wouldn't want to spend half your morning commuting up to the mine, would you? If there's silver to be found. Onward, on the trail, which is a lot clearer and very well marked now. I just tend to zigzag a bit. And we're more or less on the top of the mountain now. Still seeing the reassuring way markers, which is good. And in most cases, not all cases, you can see the next marker from the previous one. I mean, that's kind of the way it's meant to work, isn't it? So from here, well, I can see a little, a little cairn over there. So we'll head that way. So again, here's what looks like an innocent pit, but this may well be just vegetation covering quite a deep shaft. I think there is one further up that we'll see a clearer example of that. Right, now I've got to turn the camera off now to conserve battery because I, there are some things at the top I want to save my battery for. Although actually, that's one of them over there. I see it. That is Refugio de las Peñas Blancas. The Peñas Blancas Refuge. It is a mountain refuge, hostel, for anybody who gets stuck up here. Or is hiking a long way. You can sleep in that overnight. It did cross my mind to bring a sleeping bag, to come up here in the evening, bring a sleeping bag, spend the night in that little hut, and then hike back down in the morning. But I think I'm okay with hiking on my own in daytime like this. I think that might be just a little bit too much risk for me to do that overnight. Anyway, so yeah, if I was traveling with somebody else, then I think two of us, I might be, might have been prepared to stay up there overnight. Maybe next time, eh? So remember that little bit of white cliff that I pointed out from the campsite? Well, there it is. And also up ahead, I see another sign, another official sign, which I think is going to point to the refuge. The trail is a lot more obvious and well marked here. And there's a lot more mine tailing heaps. Interesting, because that's iron. That's iron ore. Maybe this was an iron ore heap that was intended to be processed. Maybe this is not tailings. Maybe this is the mining stuff and, you know, when the mine closed, it was still, you know, various operations going on. So it may well be that the, you know, what, what was happening on the last day of mining wasn't followed up the next day because the mine closed. Oh, interesting little sump there. Just a natural depression in the rock. There's a diving beetle. There are diving beetles in the water. Or are they tadpoles? The tadpoles. So this is being used by frogs for breeding. How about that? Way up here in the mountains, it's a tiny little pond with tadpoles in it and frogs are breeding here. There's another one here that's a bit dried up. How about that? Isn't that amazing? A tiny little oasis at the top of the mountain. Must just be a hole in the, in the rock with no, nowhere to, for the water to drain. I mean, this whole, the surface of this rock is just pitted with holes all over the place. There's another one over there. Though. Let's have a look in that one. So yeah, these holes in the rock are really common. And some of them would have been vents when this was lava. Uh, but uh, what an amazing sight. And what a little treat to find this all the way up here. I am thirsty, but I brought my own water. Right, onward to the refuge and the viewpoint. Okay, now I suspected we might find something like this here. This is a can. This is a thing you find quite commonly on mountain trails. 
So everybody who's hiked up here, or everybody who thought to do this, has carried a rock with them, including me. Picked this up from a tailings heap somewhere back down there. And it's just a way of saying I was here too, and adding my little contribution to this trail marker. So a lovely little can right there at the top. Okay, so viewpoint is over that way. That's definitely where we're going. And yeah, onward up the trail. I noticed there's another one of those little holes there, but I think again, it's gonna be dry. But you can see that gets wet. There's clay in the bottom. So there are probably quite a few of these little holes here. There was an ant's nest there, or maybe a burrowing wasp. But there must be quite a few of these little holes here where the frogs are able to breed. I'm just amazed by that. I know it's only, it's only nature doing its thing, but I do find that amazing. So we're not quite at the peak yet, but already look at the view. That's where we started, way down there. That's the peak we looked up at from the starting point we're now looking down at and look at the view i think from the top it stands to be even more spectacular probably would have been nicer on a clearer day but then i'd also be doing battle with the bright sunshine which would mean more stops and more water drunk oh there it is just going to stop and get a photo of that Here we go. That's the hut, the mountain refuge. We'll have a look inside in a moment. Right, so let's have a look at the view from here first. So this valley here is got, this is the Cartagena Valley. So somewhere way over there is Cartagena. And then, way over this way, hold on to my hat, in fact I might take my hat off and hold it. So way over here, we're on the edge of the White Cliffs. So these are the White Cliffs here, see that little house down there? We drive past that on the way to the airport. So over there we've got uh, Puerto de Madron and Bol Nuevo further off in the distance. Okay, now I bet you're itching to have a look inside this little hut, aren't you? Let's have a look around the back to start with. So there's a little, a little bench seat there you could sit on and enjoy the view. I think around this side, yeah, we'll find there's a little fire pit. So if you needed to do some cooking, you could cook something there. There's a, a pile of rubbish here. It's a bit disappointing. Uh, yeah, if you bring things in, you should bring them out, really. Right, let's have a look inside the hut. I suppose we should knock first in case anybody's in there. Hola, buenos dias. Doesn't seem to be anybody home. Okay, well, here's the refugio. So I'll get the light on so we can have a good look at it inside. So there's a visitor book. Well, there's a basket with not much. I think that's insect repellent there. Some plastic cups, dustpan and brush, three bunk beds, three bunks for sleeping. Lots and lots of signatures and uh, yeah, things that aren't quite signatures on the roof. Uh-huh. Someone likes knives. That's probably why I wouldn't stay up here overnight on my own. And a little window which we could open if we want some fresh air. Whoa, that's fresh. 
That's fresh, all right. Okay, well, I will sign the I will sign the visitors book. Now, what I'm a little bit surprised to find, because I thought, well, there's tissues there. There must be an LED candle. Oh, there's, a, there's a light up there. There's an LED light there. That must be the remote control for it. There's a knife there. Uh, I, as I understand it, the tradition here is to take something if you need it and to leave something if you can. So I should be leaving something here today in case anybody needs sustenance. I carried much more water than I needed to. So to save me carrying that bottle back down the hill. So I'm just gonna leave a couple of bottles of water. I've got, I bought some at the supermarket. I've got more than enough water to get me back down the hill. That's how much water I've got left. That'll easily get me back down the mountain. And a tin of sardines and some cheesy puffs. Just in case somebody gets stuck up here overnight and needs a bit of sustenance and whatever to get them back down the hill. So I will sign the visitor book and then we'll head outside for a bit of lunch. But not quite as I thought there was gonna be like, from what I've seen in pictures, there used to be like candles in here and there were, there were bottles of booze and things and it was like, you know, a little bit of a social thing. Anyway, I'm gonna head outside because it's a little bit stinky in here actually. It's not unpleasant, but it just smells a bit stale. So I think we'll head outside. Yeah, I'm kind of glad actually I didn't choose to sleep here overnight although a sleeping bag would be fine i'm sure uh, mosquitoes might be an interesting problem so we can see more mountains over there although we are looking down on them beautiful sight amazing view up here there's a bird up there i wonder if that's a, a kestrel or something peregrine maybe some sort of bird of prey way up there so with this fantastic view over the valley of madara i'm gonna have my lunch which i picked up in a panaderia yesterday this is a local speciality. This is called uh, uh, pastel de carne murciano, so a, a Murcian meat pie. So it's a meat pie topped with a swirl of puff pastry. Mm. Very crispy, it's good. This is really good. So there's like um, bacon and beef and egg and pork rind in a really crispy pastry very very good I suspect I might have lost a little bit of salt as well as water on the way up here from all that sweating so what better way to replenish that than some salted almonds almonds are a bit of a local speciality very popular in Spain anyway but especially here in the region because uh, they grow very well in semi-arid conditions so some salted almonds and i've also got i've got a couple of clementines as well okay well there's an amazing view i think that's the sierras espunas over there i think there might be higher peaks over there but a bit of a long walk from here down there there's a very interesting sort of rock pinnacle which i'll show you a picture of. i'm not going to go and get back down there because it's kind of on the edge of the cliff but there's a kind of rock pinnacle with a view across the valley here. And if you can hear a plane, there's a pilot school somewhere nearby. And you hear the planes doing, you know, revving up and then, and then diving. And I think it must be an aerobatic school. But we are actually looking down on the planes from here, which is quite interesting. Anyway, so there is still a little bit of a climb just up there to the pinnacle, to the peak. So we'll go up there, get the view from up there, and then little, another little rest, a drink, and we head back down. While we're here, let's just have a look at a few things that are growing here. So lots and lots of these dwarf palms. I think that might be an olive tree there. This is a carob. So this is a carob tree, Serotonia siliqua, flowering. These are the flowers. And so this will produce carobs. And in fact, there's one of last year's carobs that's kind of wrapped around that stem there. Carobs are sometimes used as a kind of chocolate substitute. They're not really a chocolate substitute, but they are a sugary. The pod is quite sugary and can be made into syrup. Oh, 
Okay. Well, there's a trig point or something up at the top here. Whew. Okay, well, I've taken my hat off because if my hat blows over the edge here, I ain't going to go and get it. So, this is the trig point. We are on the top of the cliffs. I'm not going to go too close to the edge because it's really quite breezy, but I'll stand up here on the trig point and, well, there's the cliff edge. Did you enjoy that? There's the white cliffs, Las Peñas Blancas. Blimey, that's a long way down. Back away carefully. I am not a, a risk taker. Look at all the caves down there. And again, those might be mines, shepherd's caves. Maybe just, you know, people who lived off the land. Maybe even, you know, quite ancient. But there we go, that's the peak. I'm gonna stand back a little bit from the edge. Okay. So we are on top of the world. Look at that. And the clouds. The clouds are going past at eye level. There's the refuge down there, and the place I started, oh, you can't even see it, it's kind of over the edge, but it's way, way, way down there somewhere. The Cartagena Valley. And I don't know where that place is over there. But yeah, those, those mountains in the distance there, I think are the Sierras Espunas which I think have higher peaks than this, even though it looks kind of like we're looking down, but that's just the effect of perspective. Well, literally, the only way from here is down. So, this has been an interesting climb, and it's a lovely day to do it, actually, because it's not scorching hot. And actually, up here, it's quite cool anyway, because we're up a mountain, but it's not boiling hot. It's been a lovely walk, although it's steadily uphill, and I wouldn't recommend it for anybody who's not into hill climbing. But what a lovely walk that's been. Okay, time for the descent. Now, there won't be so much footage on the way back down unless we stumble across something particularly interesting. This is a mallow. This plant here is some kind of, some species of mallow, I would say judging by the leaves. Might even be common mallow. There's a lot of rosemary and thyme. I think this is rosemary here. Yes. Oh, it's fantastic. Do you know what? I'm going to pick some rosemary on the way back down and I think we might make some bread with rosemary pushed in the top. So, that is so aromatic. Oh, I imagine that's because it's, it's growing in quite harsh conditions up here and rosemary produces its aroma to kind of deter things from eating it. And so when it's growing in really tough conditions, it produces more of the rosemary aroma. Rosemary aroma. Uh, anyway, I'm gonna pick some rosemary from up here on the mountain top, and then we'll go home and make some mountain top bread. We didn't get very far before we found something I wanna show you. There's a plant down here, a little silene. I think that's a... Well, I think that's that's a silene. Now, I think that's, that would be what we would call ragged robin in the UK, related to carnations. I think it's missing a petal. Now, there is a choice of routes for getting back down again. We could go down this way, which is a route called La Vibora, the Viper, and it goes down a winding sort of river canyon. I don't think it, I think it's called La Vibora because it winds like a snake. I don't think it's full of snakes. But anyway, I can't go that way because my my ride is picking me up where, we, where I was dropped off, which is over that way. So we got to go back down. You can maybe see just a little trace of the trail going over the crest of that ridge there. So we've got to go down there, round the back of this hill, and then down into this valley here. So off we go. And as I say, I'm uh, I'm probably only going to stop and put the camera on when there's something notable to look at. But there is plenty of that here because, you know, every little nook and cranny's got a different kind of life in it. 
got different plants and sometimes animals in it. See, I wonder what made those holes. Something digging for something. Oh, and these things here, these, look at these. These we used to call ladybird ants when I lived in Cyprus. I've got a feeling they are some kind of hemipterid bug, actually, not a beetle. But I will see if I can identify them. I'll put it on the screen if we can. But they're everywhere in the little bushes here, look. Just down there. They might be beetles. They might be something like a bit like a cardinal beetle. But they have the look of a hemipterid bug to me. Have a look at this snail shell. Considering the harsh conditions up here, isn't that a magnificent specimen? Obviously uninhabited, but look at that. That's a big snail for such a dry habitat. The snails tend to live underneath all of the bushes. And quite often you see after rain, the locals come out and kind of pry the bushes up with sticks and gather up the snails and purge them and then cook them. Right, which way here? Because there's a trail there and there's a trail here. This looks more established than that. So onward in the straight line. Yeah, I can see a marker over there. And we'll see if we can find another one of these big holes to look down. There is one I know that is just like a well with no edging on it or anything like that. And you could just stumble into it and fall probably a fatal distance. I think it was either an air shaft for a mine or maybe just a vertical shaft for mining. Okay, here we go. I think this might be one of those big holes. Yeah, no, well, hard to say, but again, no telling how far that goes down because what tends to happen here is there's a big hole vegetation grows in rocks fall on top of vegetation and you get a kind of mat of vegetation that looks like it's got some soil on top of it but who knows how deep that really is that over there looks like concrete and that looks like there, there might have been a, a like a steel beam in there that came across to here and maybe they were lowering things down what was originally a mine shaft it may have been filled in with rocks who knows but you don't want to go clambering down there. Uh, going downhill should be easier, right? <laughs> Not always. I mean, sometimes going downhill is quite difficult on the knees. It's easier to trip going downhill. Well, yeah, I guess it's just as easy to trip, but it's easier to trip and fall forward and fall a greater distance when you're going downhill. And some of this stuff is just rather loose. So I'm on the right trail, but I'm very glad of the extra leg. Uh, right, trail goes down there somewhere. To the cave with no name. I'm tempted to go further into that cave. It did look very solid and secure and sound. And I've got lights, I've got a spare light as well in case that one gives out. But I think that's, I think it's probably just gonna be a tunnel like that into the hillside. I don't think it branches out or turns into anything more interesting than what we saw. So on the way, we came along this trail here to find this cave. And that is the trail I need to get back down to down there. However, there is another one that goes up around here. So I think we might just have a little detour off around the corner here, just to see if there's anything interesting around the corner. Yeah, around here we've got, um, well, a lovely viewpoint, but I have to get down there to be picked up. But anyway, let's have a look around here because I think there might be another cave just on this corner here. I think this might be Cueva de las Moscas, Cave of the Flies. Sounds inviting, doesn't it? This is an interesting trail because on the one side you've got, you know, quite a steep drop. And on the other side, you've got very, very prickly bushes. And so you have to make a choice here, really. <laughs> Choose to live. Choose not to fall down the hill. But sometimes that means choosing to get a little bit scratched. Some of the bushes are a little bit ouchy. 
Well, this has got to be the kind of old mining track, I reckon, because it's a lot broader, and in fact, it widens out quite a lot here, it becomes almost a road up there. So I think this is probably the old track that they carted out the mining products with. Okay, well, there's another cave. Now this may in fact be the other end of the cave that I entered. It does go through that hillside in the vague direction of where we explored earlier. But I'm not gonna go potholing today, or spelunking as some people like to call it. But I think this might be the one called Cave of Flies. I will just check on the GPS and I'll let you know. Yes, this is indeed Cueva de las Moscas. Cave of flies. Well, there's a tiny little fly there. I'm not seeing many flies. But it, the name does not invite me to enter. And there's quite a lot more fallen rock here as well. Big chunks. So I think we might stay out of that one. So it looks like some of the roof material might be a little bit more loose than, uh, than at the other cave. So I think it would be prudent to stay out of that one. Okay, well, anyway, I'm going to have a little look around this corner because there might be something else interesting around there. And then, if well, whether or not there is or not isn't, I've got to head back along this trail here and around that sort of uh, edge of that hill there. Okay, that's as far as we're gonna go. So you can see further up there, more mine tailings and various mine workings. You can see all the different mineral staining in the rocks there. There's what looks like possibly another natural cave there or maybe another mine, maybe a drift mine that went in there various terraces. Some of these are terraces from agriculture. Some of these are just heaps of mine tailings, or they might be a bit of both, I suppose. Anyway, if I carry on much further this way, I'll be in the wrong place to be picked up because I need to get back down to that road, but I need to get down to it further down there where it goes down the mountain a bit. Uh, otherwise, I'm gonna have trouble communicating my location to the people who are kind enough to pick me up. Okay, so anyway, on we go, down the mountain. So I haven't found any mineral samples that make me want to take them home. I know certain places we've been here before, actually, in, in, in some of the mine tailings, heaps, there were some beautiful, big crystals. We thought they were quartz at the time, but I think, on reflection, from memory, what they looked like, they were cubical crystals, so I think they were probably calcite, but they were quite pretty. And there were also some sparkly silvery cubical crystals, which could have been lead or galena, but they were quite sparkly, so I think they were probably hematite. But they could have been some ore of silver or something else. There are quite a few sparkly granular metallic ores, and I'm no expert at identifying them. But anyway, we found those on a previous trip here, years and years ago, when my kids were small. But, uh, just me on my own today. I think this is the right way. Yeah, I picked up a few scratches on my legs from these bushes. Anyway, can't boil an omelette without making some eggs. So the other entrance to the Cave of Flies is just there. There's another cave in here actually that's been almost completely filled in, probably because it's unsafe. Look at all this loose tailings up here. There's a trail over there, but I have a feeling there's been a landslide and this tailings pile has slid and covered the trail. That I think would take us round to those ruins around the corner, which I think you can just about see the corner of a building up there. Probably a little hut. It's a shame we can't explore that, but I am not walking across this loose stuff here. So I think we'll head back down now. We will head, we go down this sort of little ravine and pick up that trail over there. Okay, this is interesting here because what we've got here is one of those tubes in the rocks with its mineralization still in it. So you can see the crystals 
quartz or calcite and then the rings of other minerals in there as well possibly silver maybe copper maybe maybe even gold seems unlikely I don't think they found gold here but anyway Yeah, crows, corv corvids of some sort, jackdaws perhaps, making loud noises, which probably means they're trying to make me go away from their nest. So I will. So the, the flora here, you'll notice lots and lots of these dwarf palms. I suppose folks from the United States might be wondering where are the cacti? And although this does look like the kind of terrain where you would find cacti. Cacti are not native to Europe so if you do find cacti here they're introduced. Sometimes you do find prickly pears, a puntia species, although not normally this far away from kind of civilization. Quite often you find them near the ruins of an old house or something like that because they were planted either for a hedge that is quite impenetrable to intruders or for their fruits. The big prickly pear cactus and in fact for their pads as well because obviously people eat the nopales, the uh, cactus pads but yeah as I say not native to Europe so if you find cacti here they don't belong here so mostly what we've got here is those dwarf fan palms, little pine trees, little junipers, rosemary, lavender, this very wiry grass, that sort of thing. The wind has really picked up now. I expect you can hear it. I can't even put my hat on because it's so windy, it would just blow away. So it's time for me to get myself off this mountain. I'm not at a dangerous point. I'm not on the edge of a cliff here. So the wind might blow me over into the bushes, but it won't blow me off the edge. However, it's no, it's no longer very pleasant to be here. So time to head for home. Well, this bit's interesting. So this is not the end of the video. There is the remains of a little wall here and some ground that's been sort of beaten bare. So I wonder if this was a little yard and perhaps there was a little shack or something here and this was the well this could be just a sheep pen it could be the remains of where sheep were kept overnight so yeah it could be a little sheep fold or something but definitely that's not a natural formation of stones there all the way round Funny little heap of something over here. Well, there's a little line of stones there. I wonder if that's even a grave. Perhaps there was a little homestead here. And that could be the grave of one of the people who lived here. I may have strayed away from the trail markers. They're not so easy to see on this part of the trail. This is obviously not the right trail because it's far too loose and unmade. And again, not a natural formation of rocks here. This is a little terrace. So, and the terraces here catch some of the soil that washes down the hill. So when it does rain here, these terraces will catch any of the soil that's washing down the hill and form somewhere where plants can grow a little bit more readily than they would just in the natural soil. What's going on with this plant here? So this is an interesting thing here. We've got a plant here that's got covered in woolly aphid. Got an infestation of woolly aphid here on this plant. I don't know what this is actually. Yeah, another Definitely not natural formation of rocks over there. Possibly the corner of an old building. Anyway, onward. 
So that was fun. I lost the trail for a little bit and I ended up coming down this hill instead of this hill. And so I came down to here and I could see there was a, you know, this ravine in front of me here. So I, I had to backtrack along here. It's a little bit rough. And then I crossed on that terrace here and we are now back on the trail. So yeah, finding the markers on the way back down is not quite so easy. Well, we're nearly back down now, but here's a little spectacle worth seeing. A trail of ants carrying seeds and probably other food back to their nest and I can tell the nest must be over here somewhere because the direction they're carrying the items of food is that way so an ants are going up here not carrying anything and ants are coming back down carrying little seeds sometimes dead insects And I imagine these ants are probably responsible for distributing some of the seeds of these plants. But yeah, the trail goes off up here, over there, along the rock face there, back up here, up into those bushes. They are picking, I think, rosemary seeds or whatever seeds are in the bottom of this rosemary bush here might be other plants, might be grass seeds or something and taking them all the way back down to their nest which I think must be under that rock down there because I can't see any further trail there we go now yeah this rock here which is called, which is a schist but also it it's been broken and tumbled and then reformed. So this is a this was originally a sedimentary rock like a slate or shale. It's been metamorphosed and then it's been broken up again and tumbled together with other minerals and whatnot and then solidified into another rock. But this schist, sometimes you find jewels and things in here like garnets. I haven't seen any evidence of any precious stones here. I'm just looking at another interesting thing down here. Look at all these little dimples. I wonder if these are just holes where condensation has collected on the underside of this rock and just dripped down. We can't see anything down them, so I don't think they're insect holes. But there we go, lots of little holes. Lots of little dimples in the sand. Interesting. Might be ant lion nests. That would be a peculiar place for them though. They may be the burrows of something actually that doesn't want to be washed away when it rains so they may have chosen to be underneath that little overhang. Okay right so here we are in my mum's kitchen uh, and I've got this fantastic rosemary that I picked yesterday at the very peak of the mountain. So I feel like we need to do something to celebrate the flavour and aroma of this rosemary. So I'm going to make a little loaf of bread. Something a bit like a focaccia but just a loaf of bread with some rosemary and garlic in the top. So I'm going to pull off these leaves from the rosemary because I don't want the twiggy bits really. I'll put them in this glass. It's amazing how much this has actually dried up just on the way down the mountain and overnight. So it's not completely dry. Oh, it's just so, so potent rosemary that kind of resinous, lovely rosemary aroma. Anyway, we want plenty of this because I really want to taste it. Okay, also in there, I'm going to have about, well, that's a bit less than a teaspoon of salt, so we'll go for about olive oil. Good glut of olive oil. And then I think a clove of garlic. If there is a clove of garlic somewhere, oh yeah, we got. Mum's got garlic. So I've cut that into pieces I can definitely see. I don't mind using glass cutting boards, but that's what we got. Anyway, so there we go. So some olive oil, garlic, rosemary, salt. So it's not going to be a massive loaf of bread. I'm going to go for 300 grams of flour, a good pinch of salt, 
yeast or lebedora. So we are just using instant bread yeast. And I am going to use the whole of this little five gram sachet, which is quite a lot of yeast for this bread, so it will rise and prove super quick. And it will probably have a yeasty flavor, but I don't mind that. I'll just give that a little mix together. And then we want 180 grams of water. So this is a three to five ratio. So 300 grams of flour to 180 grams of water is a three to five ratio, which should be just good enough for a nice easy dough. Okay, now that's got going. I'll get in there and just bring that together. Doesn't need a lot of kneading. We're just only gonna knead it till there are no dry patches of flour in there because this is a flattish bread. It doesn't need to develop a complex crumb structure. It is just gonna be a quick, easy loaf. Okay, that is enough of that. I will just put a little splash of oil in the bowl, just so it doesn't stick to the bowl. We'll cover that and prove that now for, it probably only gonna take half an hour in this temperature. My bread dough has now doubled in size. There's no further kneading required. So it's just gonna come whoops, straight out into the, <laughs> nearly went on the floor. <laughs> oh boy. Right. I'm just gonna use my fingers to spread that apart. And then from here, this rosemary and garlic and oil, probably not all of the oil, not just yet anyway, is gonna go over the top. And again, fingers just to distribute that. And then I'm gonna push the garlic down make sure I get the pieces of garlic and push them down inside the bread because I don't want the garlic to roast and then burn on top of the loaf or else it will just turn bitter. That will not only infuse the flavour of the garlic into the loaf but it will protect it from getting burned as well. So herbs and oil and salt distributed over the top of the loaf. A bit too much there, let's put a bit over there. A bit too much there, it can go there. Just kind of shearing it out. Okay. And then that, I don't think that even needs any further proving. That can go straight into the oven, 180 degrees Celsius. It's only gonna take about 20 minutes probably to bake. All right, that's done. So we just gotta wait for that to cool down a little bit and then I'll slice it and we'll try a bit. Okay, I think this might not be my finest ever loaf of bread. However, it is definitely bread. And it is definitely flavored with the herbs from the mountain. So, what's it gonna taste like? Mm. That's really good, really happy with that delicious and I'm sure that rosemary is better than the lowland versions of the plant, the lowland examples of the same plant. So that was my expedition to the peak of and the refuge at Las Peñas Blancas. I hope that's been interesting. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.